Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2 p.m., 3 p.m. session of the 2020 Open Simulator Community Conference. My name is Bella Luna Gigalia, and I am your moderator. In this session, we are happy to introduce a panel discussion called Crafting Gimmishoft. Did I say that correctly? <laughs> uh, for resiliency in times of social disassociation. Our panelists are Andrew Stricker, um, known as Spinoza Quinnell, Francisca Yonekura, uh, Avatar, Frankie Antonelli, and Cynthia Colon, um, Avatar, Lear Lobo. Uh, Dr. Andrew is an education innovation analyst with Air University's LeMay Center for Doctrine, Development, and Education. Um, Andrew also engages in collaborative design of assistive, immersive 3D virtual and augmented reality simulations for helping to improve complex problem solving among teens. In 2020, he was elected to the Board of Directors of the International Board of Standards in Performance, Training, and Instruction. Francisca Yonakura Frankie, comes from the higher education world where she specializes in instructional systems and emerging technologies in support of learning. Frankie is also known to be a curious traveler immersed in virtual worlds for empowering learning experiences in the company of kindred spirits. FTW for the win. Dr. Cynthia Alir Lobo is a professor at Colorado Technical University and CCC Online, fell in love with the virtual reality environments in 1995 when she developed a system and ran usability experiments with data gloves and head mounted display devices. She loves game and simulation design and dreams of the future of Open Simulator. Unable to join us today are Dr. Barbara Truman, delightful do waggle, and JJ Drinkwater. Ms. Elizabeth Stricker and Ms. Kathy Fit Flitter. Now, please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded. So if you have any questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC20. Welcome, everyone, and let's begin the panel discussion. Thank you, and thank you to our audience and my fellow panelists. This is Lear, and I wanted to give a shout out to Dr. Barbara Truman, who I believe is listening. She's a strategic advisor for immersive learning and collaboration at the University of Central Florida, and we think of her as our inspiration. She keeps us strong, and she, she works with, uh, with Frankie here, but she has been a guiding light for us, and we just wanted to give a shout out to her to JJ Drinkwater, our science fiction librarian, to, of course, Mrs. Betty Stricker and Mrs. Kathy Flitter, who you're going to meet in our slides coming up. So Andy, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, great. Well, um, we thought we'd give you a little background about um, the title. <laughs> Uh, we, we had a little fondness for uh, use of German. Um, so much of what we do centers around a German utopian community called the Harmony Society, and they settled, uh, they built uh, a couple of communities in um, the early 1820s. And, and, um, and actually, um, myself and, and Lear and um, Barbara, we, we were from the uh, area of New Harmony. So, um, so German uh, has a wonderful way of uh, putting a lot of thought in, into into a single word that, um, and so Gemeinschaft um, represents a community, but it has a very rich history of of thinking about how important it is for us to be connected with others. That um, you know almost seems like family, and so we're going to talk to that in our panel uh, during our visit with you. And as always, it is a wonderful, wonderful. Uh, privilege to be with the Open Sim community in this conference and and to share uh, a, a, about our work. Now, I just want to highlight from this uh, uh, this opening image here why we have it. Um, if you're if you're like some of us, <laughs> we're living in strange times, and and the world can seem like it's upside down. And so, you know, part of what um, JJ has been so thoughtful uh, in helping us. Um, over uh, quite some time is, is she's always uh, encouraging us to to thrive, you know, to stay close to each other, 
uh, connect with each other and to thrive. Uh, even even when things seem out of whack and difficult and challenging and, and the events that happen to us in our daily lives, uh, we believe that one of the most powerful benefits of open sim and these immersive shared uh, spaces is the the means to stay connected and and to you know have the experience of community and we'll talk more in detail about what that community uh, as, as we uh, uh, try to practice it in our uh, virtual harmony um, uh, group of, of people that are participating in it uh, Lear, is there yeah thank you and Lear's going to share some images here with, with, from our experience. So. Andy has a masterful way of capturing emotion and the angst we all feel at being sheltered in place, at watching our loved ones suffer, and of course, seeing the world in crisis. And of course, we get together every Sunday, and we normally conduct research, design simulations, test them, and do all kinds of quirky things, right? But this year, we took some time out to also think about healing and to think about our world and how we can help strengthen it. Here you see us inside the, the Loire village on the uh, Loire grid, and we are in Barbara Truman, Delightful Do Angle's home. She's sitting there at the piano, and I'm standing next to her, and we're all gathered around. And of course, we're celebrating. We created wine bottles with wine labels, which may sound terribly frivolous, right? I know what you're thinking. You're supposed to be working, right? <laughs> and yet we had to do all of these various things to strengthen our spirit. I think of this shot as hearth and home. This is March of 2020 when we all realized that COVID was quite real and we had to do something. Frankie, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Um, uh, yeah, no. Um, okay. This is... Hmm. Um, my my uh, audio is not coming through. I don't know why. Oh, you sound great. We can okay. You. Okay. Yeah, this is um, actually a, a very meaningful photo for myself because this is when I was able to rejoin again uh, the virtual worlds uh, to to give me strength to go through these difficult times uh, we are all living as a society. Andy, I love this photo. He he organizes these beautiful mm -hmm. imagery and these beautiful ways of thinking about our experiences together. So it's not just that we get together and we create content, we design, we simulate, we test, we we reflect. I'm the one who's going around saying, "Hey, watch those permissions." You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm always the the person who's very interested in the collaborative side of each of us having equal access, but. Andy captures the magic of that experience so well in this image. Andy, over to you. Well, thank you. This is a powerful visual because, <laughs> um, you know, not all of us, of course, uh, start off in life with the, the the warmth of things that can be with family life. But but on, on at least at some level, uh, as we as we come into an awareness of our identity and how we're going to fit in with the world um, you know usually there's people around us uh, in our families that uh, give us a touchstone of warmth and acceptance and and we have a sense of trust with them and this is uh, from Ferdinand Tony's view of, of Gemein and Schaft you know where he says basically it's that family centeredness that creates the right foundation um, for us in life and so but you know we, we don't stay there we have to you know grow and develop and take uh, up an, a larger identity as we fit in with others outside of our smaller communities and so uh, we have to travel as it were uh, from our, our the warmth of our home uh, to the larger society and this is Gil Shellshoft and so this visual just struck home because, you know, you can think, you can imagine yourself walking across the bridge. And we talk about bridges quite a bit in our work <laughs> because um, um, there, there's so much uh, that is symbolic with a bridge. But as we as we go from what is familiar to that which is uh, unfamiliar and maybe perhaps even frightening, and I, that's why I love the, the image of the wolf uh, 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 over on the uh, far left-hand lower corner. But you know it can seem dangerous, 
uh, as we go out into the world. And so part of what we try to do is, 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 is we try to, you know, help people as they trans, uh, you know, across bridges in life and explore and try new things out, but give them a sense of community um, that they wouldn't otherwise feel. So, Lear, over to you. Well, you know, Andy, we didn't start with 12 grids, right? It, it happened over the course of this year. <laughs> We started with, let's say, three or four grids. And, and the reason we had them architected the way we did was we had the space program, right? And we had the mission to Mars where you would fly in a rocket, you'd go up to the space station, only we had a very futuristic fantasy kind of space station at first, very Star Wars, right? And then we started thinking about, well, maybe we need to craft a little reality that actually bridges with our vision of the future. And so Andy started redesigning all of our builds and re-architecting everything. And every week or two, he'd say, hey, we have a new grid. Come on over. <laughs> and this is one day, but yeah, this was in May. And he had a family member who was graduating from, I think, college. And so he said, hey, let's hold a graduation party for someone who, who can't have their own graduation party and can't get out. We're all sheltered in place. This is May 2020. So we're all in these sailboats sailing over to this yacht, this amazing 10 bedroom place. We all have our own cabins there. <laughs> and it's called the, uh, the wind song, right, Andy? Yes. That's right. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I take, I'm the photographer for the group in case you're wondering. So, if, so I just want the people who, who still use wind light to realize I use it and I love it because I love these emotional ways of thinking about the sun on my face and thinking about, you know, the play of light on the objects around me. And I'm singing this song, sailing, take me away to where I'm going. And <laughs> Andy wound up becoming DJ. He had no DJ, well, limited DJ spell skills beforehand. But next <laughs> thing you know, <laughs> we all made our favorite playlist. We all went to YouTube and said, pick your favorite video, music videos. Let's assemble them in a Google Doc. And let's, uh, let's create our own playlist, be our own DJs, create these experiences, and then have our own dances. And for the rest of you, you're going, well, that's trivial. We do this all the time. Well, for us, we're a collection of geeks, okay? No offense, guys. But, um, you know, we're researchers, and we're all, we're all people who think very seriously about our work in these spaces. And we're like, we need to move and dance and laugh. And, and of course, uh, Kathy is sitting there a couple seats over from me. I'm the one in the hat on the right, right? And, and her son's next to her. And of course, so here's an image of him graduating. And of course, he's surrounded by all of us, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what was amazing to me is this is their first day in world, okay? So this is the sign of someone who comes into world, has a graduation ceremony, is able to get his clothes on, right? And, it, and, his, <laughs> and of course, his mom too. And, and they became part of our community. And of course, there's uh, Betty Stricker as well between Andy and myself uh, and Barbara, uh, delightful do angles over by the guardrail. Andy, over to you. So, you know, as we as we go further along in, in life, um, you know, the Ferdinand Antonis talks about that, you know, we're on this journey towards uh, how to fit into larger uh, Gesellschaft society, you know, where, um, you know, there's rules and laws and you have to, uh, you know, enter into con contractual basis for uh, agreements for how things are going to be done. And they're not driven by, you know, um, you know, trust and, and it's so much what you may give your word to do. And so there is there is that kind of sense of of having to, you know, um, fit in, as it were, to a much more formal way of how we get to know other people and, and connect with them. But we want to take, as it were, a bit of our home with us. And so I love this visual where we have this young person who is basically uh, – got her seashell and it's a wonderful uh, metaphor for you know taking with us all the things that are precious to us in life and trying to keep a little bit of that home uh, no matter where we go 
Right. And of course, you know, as an aviator, I like the propellers at the end, but, <laughs> but, uh, uh, so, so this is, this is something, and, and, you know, when you start out on this journey, it's, it, it for, for many cases, it, it, it's, it's daunting, but it can be kind, it can be very thrilling, you know, about what could be, what, what is the possibility as we, as we, you know, discover, uh, ourselves and how we fit into a larger society. Over to you, Lear. Well, I love these images, but we have 30 of them, and I'm mindful of the time being one of the organizers. <laughs> <laughs> so next thing you know, he gives us these submersibles. And you have to realize, Ma Andy is designing all this mesh. He's scripted everything. He's a psycho cognitive psychologist who is a learning architect for, for Air Force education. And rethinking new ways for people to learn and have these wonderful immersive experiences. So he's busy, busy, busy all the time. And yet every week there's new content. I, 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 I'm sure he doesn't sleep. And right now, one of the reasons some of the folks in our group are not with us is he had a flood. And of course, much of his house was sitting outside, but the servers survived. <laughs> So we were still online, but but of course they're they're uh, repairing everything, right? Uh, two floors flooded out, and so we are so thankful for everything he does. But I love these submersibles and the the submarine. And I know whenever I go around the virtual world, you guys have all this stuff. What makes it special to us is it's our stuff, stuff that has been created by our team. And if we don't if we need something a little bit different, we say, hey, what would happen if we did this? <laughs> and next thing you know, it's different. You know, it's, it's, right. it's customized to us. And here's what happened when we got out of the submersibles. We decided to let our hair down. And I don't know if many of you know me. You know, I'm always dressed as if I'm, you know, stem to stern, right? But here we are having a really good time, relaxing and taking joy in this beauty. And this is what I think about when I think about the value of these spaces. There's really no, the, the words are in, uh, futile. They're, they're, uh, they're parse, they're sparse. They, they don't really capture the, the excitement, the joy, the passion. You know, when I hear people say open simulator, no offense, Bart, uh, is boring. I know your point was that it isn't. And you're absolutely right. It's this place of the imagination. And it's where we take ourselves. This is where we spent time healing. Uh, Sin, could I could I interrupt? Yes, go right ahead. Um, yeah, uh, on the on the topic of Andy, uh, not just because he's here, but I wanted to highlight uh, what a phenomenal job he has done uh, to create these beautiful spaces. Um, you know, we, we and it's not just frivolous moments that we spend. We have a rich intellectual intellectual as well as fan conversations. I mean, we have learned about history, uh, sustainability, uh, transportation and technology in general um, that um, keeps my mind occupied, right? And and uh, engage with everybody and not only that, he has created these collaborative moments in time that is receptive to modifications. He comes together uh, with these designs based on our feedback, but then he's also willing to modify it right on at that moment, you know, to suit the needs of what each one of us uh, want to do uh, at that moment. And, um, and what I'd also like to highlight is that subliminally or not, um, he has encouraged us to kind of come prepare, experiment on our own by giving us our own space to play in his grid. I haven't taken that advantage uh, as much as I should, but <laughs> I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Andy, I love this image because, you know, I, I'm just looking forward to the future. I know you're talking about social dissociation, but that's the good news is because we have this community, because we gather and it just feeds our spirit. Even if we're having virtual chocolate, it is amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> Over to you, Andy. Yes, the, the, you know, we start out with high hopes, but, but a lot of times we can end up sort of what this visual is depicting. You know, um, you know, we, we feel like that uh, what's what's 
keeping the nutrients in our hearts and 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 going forward is drying up <laughs> and so here we have the 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 young the young person who's sort of feeling very uh isolated um and and she can look off into the horizon and see the the flocking of of these birds and 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 you know and, and the little the, the rays of hope there but she needs to she needs nutrients she needs to to have uh, the things around her uh, to um, blossom again, as it were. And so, so part of what we're f trying to do in the in the immersive spaces that we're co-creating together is to say, okay, you know, what can we do to help people um, to you know get fed those nutrients of, of when you feel like you're connected with other people, and you and you are in trustful relationships. And you can, um, you know, feel like there's a place, even if you're living in large metropolitan areas or you're out isolated in rural areas. But how can we, regardless of your ge geographical location, feel connected and and get all the 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 social benefits of community? Lear? Hey, now I'm going to go a little faster on some of the slides, but when we get to Andy's part, we will pause on this one. I'm just so mesmerized by the sky. I have a new system and, and it, the way I see the world these days just really captures my imagination. And, and, and of course, um, we're not alone, even though we're all in these little sailboats, we're chasing each other. We're having such a good time because we can't find the buoys. We're on a race, by the way, but we're going around in circles. Like, did you see the buoy? I didn't see the buoy. That's hey. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Is hysterical, and and so we, and these are resible ones that he's created, and I know they exist everywhere else, but there's something magical when it's your stuff, and and you've crafted this and you've shared it, right? It, it's incredible. Yeah. And here is this is Frankie. I included <laughs> this because I just loved watching her take off and just scuba, and she wasn't aware that I was following her with my camera. <laughs> just enamored with how she was exploring and she looks absolutely natural like this. This looks like our next vacation, frankly. Oh, that's true. I tend to wonder a little too much. No, I love it. I love it. Love it. And uh, I'm going to put a shout out to Kathy Flitter. You know, she's, she is um, Andy's sister-in-law and such a brave lady. She has come and joined us never having been in a virtual world before, to the best of my knowledge. And you know what? It was like her third or fourth week. It might have been a little more. We said, hey, you should fly our rocket. And of course, what we didn't tell her is that Andy has written these very, <laughs> very detailed schematics um, on what you do when you're a true astronaut. You have to flip all those switches and change all those little red things to green in the upper panel. You have to do all this stuff or else you run out, of, you, you don't have fuel. You know? That's right. <laughs> you can't break off the second stage. And so she's literally about to take off and we're all snickering, right? Because we're like, this will be good. And you know, she did it. She she figured it all out. And I, I didn't know she was a computer scientist, but you know what I'm saying? Most of us, the first time you sit in a rocket, you wouldn't successfully fly it to the space station. Mm -hmm. So a shout out to you, Kathy. I know you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> and, and here she is with Barbara Truman. She lands and it drops her off, and she says, "Man, no spacesuit." <laughs> That's true. And of course, we have these space simulations because we're thinking about the future. We're thinking, you know, going to Mars and living or breathing on Mars is an impossible thing to do today. It's a complex challenge that has incomplete data and incomplete discoveries. And we have thought, what would it be like if we crowdsourced? you know, how to behave, how to do these things. And if we tried to learn something from people who have no background in this subject, what could we discover if they didn't have boundaries? If they didn't know what was not possible, would they try to solve the problem in interesting ways that might teach us something? So we're really learning a lesson in humility and in an appreciation of diversity yeah. through these simulations. Over to you, Andy. Great, and we, we can quickly go through this slide, but this is where, uh, and all the things that you're hearing Lear and Frankie share, we're, we're wanting people to, to connect 
the benefits of what they know from their close friendships and family with the benefits of thriving in, in larger society. And and so, you know, and, and we want this to be so people can soar and, you know, uh, stay healthy uh, all the way through life's journey. And if you go to the next one, Lear, thank you. Well, you know what's fun about this? This is Betty Stricker, Andy's wife, and she's, she, she runs a therapy program for her community where she goes around to folks who perhaps they're not able to walk or perhaps they have a learning disability or whatever. And she brings the little bitty horse, Molly Mae West. And that's Molly all dolled up on the right there, the little bitty one. And she takes her around and helps people to feel connected and in touch with nature when they're not able to get out. And not just because of COVID, they're just not able to get out, period. And so she does these amazing things with people and I have this slide, and then I want to show you the next one. Look what she's doing in the times of COVID. Okay, oops, I must have put it, I put it right after this one. Let me go forward one, because we showed this earlier. And we'll get back to it in just a sec. But let's see, this is Betty, what she's doing while she's not here, okay? She's off with her horse, Hef, and of course, she's showing us how to truly be alive and to enjoy nature, even when you're staying at home. Yeah, we we can go through this one quickly too, but this um, is our uh, sense of how we connect all of our different uh, talents together to create these kinds of spaces uh, for people to feel connected with one another. So you know, it's it's given the opportunity to you know be uh, able to take your imagination and put things together, and we do it in such a way as Frankie was sharing earlier that. Um, you know, we may build the foundation for the possibility, but then others come in with a story. Uh, uh, Cynthia, for example, is a wonderful writer and storyteller and with Barbara and 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 um, and Betty's stories and Kathy's and JJ. JJ is our uh, our librarian and she enriches the stories with a wealth of references um, to all kinds of works in literature. And so by the crafting, it's 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 like you're living in a story, actually, when you go into these these places and, and you and they're dynamic, you get to change it. Lear? You know, I want to do a shout out also to Frank Ruloff and Lisa Laxton and our our Infinite Metaverse Alliance and the Moses community. And we've been part of all these different communities. And of course, we have a deep appreciation for everything you're doing because you're really thinking about the interface, which is the, how the user perceives our world. We love the open similar software, but we recognize it's the viewer and it's the interface and it's how people use it to create content that creates a, a personalized magical experience for them. And, you know, I went to Magnolia Gardens that Lisa was talking about yesterday and, you know, I was so enamored. She gives me this fishing pole and I start fishing and I will not fish in real life, okay? Because that requires touching worms or flies and, oh. and actually touching fish. You know, that's that's obviously not me. But um, but what's funny is I start fishing and I catch all these fish. And next thing you know, one of her bots comes by and steals my fish, okay? And I'm like, hey, give that back. <laughs> and proceeds to plant with it and starts creating ama amazing and magical things. And different things. I start watching, and they—they're not on a, a base script. They—they uh, they have some randomizing functions, and it was so funny. I took the fishing pole back with me to uh, Virtual Harmony, and I started fishing up. And of course, I have nothing to fish, and of course, it complains at, at regular intervals. But I don't care. It's my fishing pole, okay? And I love it. <laughs> anyway, thank you for that. Well, here we are gathered on the wind song. This could be the Capri because we made two copies of the boat, thanks to Andy. And we also have something we call Gilligan's Island. And those of you who have ever watched old time television know that's a bunch of castaways who've been stranded on an island. And of course, they're, you could call them misfits because they're all from different walks of life. I would call them a, diver a diverse crowd to a certain degree that have a variety of backgrounds that are very interesting when they come together. There's Barbara Truman in the foreground um, with, with Frankie Antonelli next to her. 
uh, Betty Stricker and I are sitting there and we're thinking about our next venture. And I have my tiki parrot on my shoulder. <laughs> and of course, I'm wearing a um, cardinal because we're from Indiana. And of course, that uh, the cardinal is our bird. And I love having nature all around me everywhere we go. Now I'm going to move a little faster and then turn it back over to Frankie and to Andy. Andy, this one's for you. What all, the only thing I want to point out here is at the bottom, those are the 12 grids that every two or three weeks he'd say, hey, let's go to such and such grid. So we are hyper gridding. But what he has done is he's created a little tool for us so we never have to put in the destination in the world map. Now, I still do it because I'm kicking it old school, right? But everyone else can actually kick the guided kiosks and signs and all this. And so the rest of you go from region to region. We go from grid to grid. So we don't have regions in the classical sense. Andy, over to you. So, so what you've been hearing from, from us uh, and, and the things that we write about is, you know, um, putting all these pieces together that this visual represents. So we, we want to have uh, places where we can come together that has no physical boundaries. We want people to thrive psychologically, spiritually, um, in, in all the ways that is right for them. And we want them to uh, have this wonderful uh, opportunity to let their imaginations uh, take off and, and to create the kinds of experiences that um, they would like to share with others. And, and so, as Lear mentioned earlier, we have a little French community that we all have residences in. And so each of us can create ways to uh, welcome others to come and visit and share the things in our life that matter. Um, we have collaborative design spaces that we support, not only for our students, but for our um, um, close uh, contacts in virtual harmony. And we also have this, uh, this, this very uh, strange thing that's happened in the last few years. Um, we, we talk about as transcendentalism, where we, we've, we feel as if we're transcending some of the limitations of the, the you know, issues and challenges in life. Uh, and, and, and I don't know, you know, some of you can probably talk to this in much greater detail than what we can, but we think that when you connect the virtual experiences with the things in your life in the physical world, um, you transcend to uh, a, a better place. Uh, if, if all the parts that we've been talking about come together for um, creating this Gemeinschaft experience, um, we think that in the future, um, society is going to be much better because of these opportunities that uh, you know what open simulator community is, is actually offering the world. And so when when people and each of you out there hearing us talk about this, they're doing your own open open simulator work. I think many of you can speak to this that um, you know maybe you came in it because of a technological curiosity. But what we found is actually life changing. It really does change um, your perspective about um, your life and, and how community is possible with others. Right. You know, someone the other day was saying, uh, you know, this distinction between the real life and the virtual life. And I says, you know, I'm real in every space that I occupy. And some of them are in my mind. Some of them are, you know, visualized and shared and others are around my body. None of them are uh, lack a certain degree of reality. So I don't really think in those terms. Now, he's given little descriptions for all of us underneath, and we're not going to get into that. But um, I, I do want to tease him for just a moment. He gave everyone these amazing apartments, and I just love them. You know, they're, and I visit them because I love them. I wouldn't want to be in my own space by myself anyway, but I want to tease him because he turned to me and he says, I know you love books, which is so true. I had over 10,000 pounds of books, right? last time I moved. And uh, so he gives me this bookstore in this little French village. And we walk inside. It's two meters by, let's say, three meters, OK? I have bathrooms that are larger, OK? And I'm like, oh my gosh, my camera's outside the building. <laughs> 
because I, I, <laughs> I uh, set it at three meters isometric. So, so we all gathered in, all five or six of us, and some of us look like our heads are stuck in the bookshelves and all. And I says, well, I love books, but this might be a little closer than I had in mind. <laughs> It was cozy for sure. <laughs> it was very cozy. So then we went flying, and this is over the Grand Canyon. He did give us a Grand Canyon, and you know we use the same space. We we retexture it and use it for some of Mars. <laughs> we're constantly reusing things that we have. Now in this scene, we're getting close with our balloons because we're trying to use voice within 60 meters, right? <laughs> and so we're we're thinking about that as we go and. Here's, here's Betty dancing on her birthday. We've celebrated, uh, there's like four of us who have birthdays in May. So May is a big month for us. And then, and then of course, this celebration. Andy's the DJ in the background. And I love the Art Deco imagery above his head. And this whole effect, this being able to dance and, and to feel this connectedness. It's not just a special event. This is something we can do often and well. Frankie, did you have anything you wanted to add on this? There's Frankie uh, in the on the right there. That's true. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what we were uh, con uh, confabulating here, but you know, uh, we were yeah. planning this talk. That's what I thought was so there funny. You go. I, I like I'm the photographer. We'll get to talking about something. I just start snapping, and I'll yes, whip around the camera angles, change the wind light, think about what we're all doing, and and of course we were and. I'm the one who's constantly saying, well, we have to talk. We have to, we have to have a conference. We have to do things. Right. We have to share. <laughs> None of these it. experiences can we keep to ourselves. They have to be shared. Mm -hmm. Now, Andy, this one's the Paul Tillich Garden in, mm -hmm. in New Harmony, Indiana, where that utopian society used to be. And Paul Tillich was a famous theologian. The reason I love this scene, it may not look like much to you guys, but the real life one, is a collection of pine trees that even in the hottest point in summer, when it's over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, um, it's cool there. And the pine needles smell so beautiful, that warm pine smell. And you sit on these little benches. And one of the best restaurants in the world is right there behind you with incredible food. And in the winter, a fireplace, you know. And, and so it has all these sensory experiences that make us feel so connected. Andy, did you have anything to add to that? Yes, I, yes, we highlighted just a, a bit at the beginning. Uh, a lot of our inspiration comes from the early American experiments with new forms of community. And, 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 and that tradition is still very much uh, in us, I think, uh, you know, that, you know, we, we can always reshape how we think about community and and try to take advantage. And I love what I'm reading the comments in the chat window about it's all real, virtual and physical, and, and we couldn't agree more. It's all real. And and just to open up people's minds to what is possible. Back to you, Lear. Well, you know, I mentioned we, we come from a city that normally shuts down for a week to hold a fall festival because it's a German city in Indiana five communities that got together and they call it the West Side Nut Club Fall Festival, right? And I, well, growing up, I used to think, wow, this is the time when you celebrate from 10 in the morning till two in the morning, just a nonstop party for an entire mile of, of shops and food and you name it. And so Andy, I, I started talking about that and saying how I missed that. Next thing I know, the next week we have our own Oktoberfest, right? We had booths, we got to decorate them and and of course, you see the little cat holding the uh, pumpkin, and there's a lot of quirky images. I didn't feature them all here, but it was just a lot of fun. And we're just being silly for pre-Halloween. Meanwhile, Andy has created this space for us to dance and, and to celebrate and under the awning there and has featured some birthdays. And that's JJ in white in the center there. You know, uh, and you can see some of our booths for our fall festival off in the distance. And of course, we're celebrating Betty's birthday party. And I just wanted to remind you that as you experience things in your life, I, lo I love to curate these experiences and to think about why they mattered. And if I should go away tomorrow, you know, how will people remember? And what kind of impact have I had? You know, how, how do we connect in these amazing ways? Well, there's Barbara on the left. Uh, sitting there relaxing and of course those are her cats she got little uh 
kittens this year to help her with her healing mm-hmm. and they've grown up <laughs> rascal and mischief, mischief yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> and so we're about to actually i went a little fast through those last slides so so andy or bar or excuse me frankie yeah. uh, i tend to talk too much i know that but oh, no. i love um uh, you know i met frankie when the new media consortium came to defense mm-hmm. game tech sun Tzu was there and and that's we had right. just won the um, the grand prize for our space simulation, and and that's when I met Barbara too, and so we all yeah we all bridged and the the NMC was responsible for the Horizon Report, which is the next five years of technology and education, and they were always looking ahead, thinking about where are we going, what should we do next to shape our world, how can we strengthen it so that our young people so they're not just reading facts and and thinking in a distant fashion about the past and the future, but they're actually living it, having experiences that are memorable. Not just watching video, not passive, but actually going inside and having deep probing questions that matter. You know, what is it about these spaces that we want to preserve? And long after we move to other technologies, whatever that is, whether it's better systems, better graphics cards, you know, better interfaces, whatever that is. Um, how will we preserve these magical moments that help shape us and our society? Yeah, I love that picture. Um, it it kind of reminded me of moments in which, although we are, you know, actively interacting with each other and learning, um, there are those moments uh, in which we kind of uh, reflect upon, you know, there's those quiet moments uh, together to to see where we're going next. So Andy, this is wonderful. Tell us about this image. <laughs> well, the, as you, you know, we talked about in our time together with this panel about ways of th- thriving. And then I mentioned about uh, Barbara and, and she's she's um, so inspirational too for us for you know what we refer to as soaring you know so when you thrive you can soar <laughs> so this so so this this visual uh just speaks to our heart you know of you know what is what, what it's what happens in your spirit when you soar and so there's there's this a wonderful um way that you can you know go way beyond the the limits of what you might have thought uh, were you know constraints in your life and and experience things that you you know otherwise may not ever thought you could in in a virtual way. So as Lear and Frankie and and others have talked about, uh, we can go on these wonderful journeys of imagination to uh, worlds that have not yet um, been created, but we've we've envisioned them. We can participate uh, through. Uh, um, you know our our efforts with you know some of the the science uh, discoveries and share with our students and when we when we're participating in these kinds of of environments that inspire uh, I think you know as educators we've seen that regardless of where you're at in your life it's like uh, Carol Dwight has talked about you know you 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 get this growth mindset and where you can realize that no matter where you're at in the journey, uh, now, however, whatever your age may be, uh, these kinds of experiences uh, can cause you to feel like you can soar and keep soaring all the way through the, to the very end. So <laughs> we'll, we'll open up to questions right now. But, uh, but again, thank you so very much for having us uh, today and, and participating uh, on, with you on this, through this panel. No. Yeah, thank you all. Um, I'm reading a message. Mary Steph Rocky on YouTube says, great photos, Lear. It's a, <laughs> definitely a beautiful visualization and a way to uh, take ideation to the next level. So thank you for that. Any other questions you know, from the audience that you might see on did, in chat? We had a question, question from Larissa Firehawk who asks, how can we... How can we come out and join and tour? Yep. And I know Gamisa has been out before, but that was before we re-architected in a big way. So all of our links, everything changed quite a bit. And we, by the way, we want to put a shout out to 
and if I'm saying your name wrong, my apologies, right? But um, to Gamisa, you know, he scripted the hat that I normally wear to, for the conference, the clock top hat. And of course, you have to realize, um, when I when I received the Thinker Award from Virtual World's Best Practices in Education, they said it was because they looked in their inventories, one reason, and they saw a lot of content from me, you know, the, the owner creator. And I got to thinking about that and I thought, in our connectedness, we have so much content from you. Each one of you has made a stamp in our lives. We may not have it on virtual harmony, but as I go around the grid and I look at everything that comprises our universe, our metaverse, right? I, each of you has made a profound impact. Even the folks who don't create, you've touched things, you've owned things, maybe you've left them behind, right? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, even as we stumble upon content that others have left, you've left your mark. You're, yes. you're part of that society, yeah. And interestingly enough, the things we touch, love, open, share, wear, even when we wear a box on our head, right? <laughs> We've all been there. And of course, these experiences have a sense of whimsy that we can all appreciate. We never want to lose track or lose touch uh, with that humility of being new, of being a stranger in a strange land and having a deep and probing appreciation for these worlds. <laughs> I, love, yeah. I love that you brought up Robert Heinlein. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the gang knows me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a science fiction fan was jj drinkwater uh, best known as the uh, perhaps the library of caledon is a science fiction librarian you know a curator of science fiction content for a university and and of course is always keeping us in in mindfulness Val, you would appreciate this youtube bethany and a marine bands is that she uh, always making us think about our content getting our ideas down curating everything we do and then of course making sure we are digitally responsible with our intellectual property <laughs> now you'll notice i share everything on slides and imagery and and i invite you to be able to download my slides and use any of my images now andy he may not be as sharing but somehow through association with me i'm afraid i share for the group and, and the reason i do that is we really want our world to grow stronger we want everyone to survive, to be stronger, to, you know, and to, to think about what have we learned through 2020 and how can we make our world a better place? See, I don't think of COVID as this disease that, that trots on through and disappears. I think of this as a lesson learned in how we, we have to bridge and, and reach out to one another and be a good neighbor and to, to care for one another. Even if we're stuck at home, you know, we can still reach out. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and Frankie, did you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, we're at two um, minutes. Sure, um, I'll be quick. I just wanted to say thank you to you, uh, Lyra and Andy, but also the whole community of OpenSim and uh, those of us in InWorld, because this year in particular, it just cemented in me how how powerful, how meaningful, how uh, I can't have enough uh, adjectives to to add to these uh, to be able to build that grit, the the strength to be able to manage through all these challenges that we are facing. The, truly, they can main shaft, uh, you know, the, uh, that uh, Andy introduced us to. Uh, to gather in world, to engage, uh, you know, not as regular as I like to be, or uh, but uh, definitely, you know, at least during the conference times, the community conference, uh, to be able to go and manage the trials and tribulations of our everyday life, uh, to maintain most of all a positive outlook, and and have those. Uh, nourishing moments, experiences for us to keep going and then uh, again share with the rest of us with our neighbors like you said, Lear. Now we have a question um, that came in through YouTube and this is for all of you. Have you actually tried a Zoom-like meeting um, with all of you on it to compare <laughs> from that? You know, we haven't, I don't know if that we've used Zoom, but we, we have the Harmony Society, we have our own um, Harmony Arts channel in Discord, in case you're wondering. And then uh, we, we've we used Blue uh, Big Blue Button, Andy's used it, because he uses it for 
you know, some of their church services and things like that. And, and, um, but you know, technologies like that, I only use them in, in case a community member cannot talk in, in voice or, you know, Vivox is not working for them or something. So I use it as an enabler, but I don't use it to replace the virtual world. I think of it as giving everyone a voice and then we get in the virtual world, right? So um, that's me personally. The others may have another thought. Before we, we, uh, we only, we're out of time, so you have to have a quick thought. But I'd like to thank the organizing committee because when I asked about this conference, they were like, well, are we sure everyone wants to meet? And I says, yes, we <laughs> never wanted to meet more than we do this year. And I want to thank all our volunteers. You guys are amazing. Your streaming team, you guys make it happen and you give us memories that will last. The core developers, you know, if you weren't here, and I mean historically, all of you, everyone, and you, you bit, who keep us vibrant and alive without you, you know, we would all be so sad. And you have to realize the viewer developers, how we see our world, and how we shape it. The educators who give us new ideas, ask questions and challenge us. The third party creators and the research that's going on. Each of you, when you ask questions, when you're demanding, you make our world better. We wanna thank you. Okay, final thoughts, yes. Frankie and, and Andy. Well. <laughs> I just, I'm just really enjoying all the the wonderful comments in the chat uh, uh, log, and thank you so very much, everyone. So, and and yes, uh, you're you're welcome to come visit us uh, through our our grid. So you can hypergrid into Virtual Harmony, so we we'd love to host you, and if if you have an opportunity to visit us, and we meet each week, each Sunday, at uh, three o'clock uh, Central Time. So you're, you're you're always welcome to visit. I know you guys may be right. wondering, why does she just mm -hmm. drop the URL in the chat? It's because I have two more weeks of class and I've promised them a closed environment. <laughs> <laughs> and teachers are always good with their promises, right? Go ahead there, Frankie. Oh, no, no, I just wanted to thank you. Uh, thank the OS community, Joyce, you know, and all of you who organized in, in provide the platform today and yesterday and every year. And I look forward to 2021. Yes. All right. Definitely. Thank you, everyone. To 2021. Right. Thank you. <laughs> and Cheers. thank you to the panelists for this terrific discussion. Um, as a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. And following the session, there is a break, followed by the next session, which starts at 3.30 p.m. in this keynote region. It is entitled, entitled Dystopia Rising, How Emergency Remote Education Opens the Portal to the Metaverse. Also, we encourage you to visit the OCC20 Poster Expo and Expo Region 3 to find accompanying information on all the presentations, also to explore the hypergrid tool resources and Expo Region 2, along with sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout the entire Expo regions. Thank, thank you to all of you and um, to our speakers and audience, and we'll see you at 3.30.